The truth is out there. Knowledge is power. This is the Prepper Podcast Radio Network. Don't get caught with your pantry down. Try the most delicious Just Add Water storable food from Go Foods. No GMOs, no preservatives, no trans fats, no hydrogenated oils, and a 25-year shelf life. Enjoy it today and save money. Share it with others and earn money. Store it for the future and invest your money. You can't find better food for less anywhere. Made in the USA and guaranteed 100%. Plus, try it for free and decide for yourself at www.lovegofoods.com. To Try it for free. Go to www.lovegofoods.com. That's www.lovgofoods.com. Hey, preppers. James Smith here. I've got a new advertiser to tell you about. It is ultimatepreppers.net. A couple brothers out of the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area that have this website. It's chock full of everything you need and at a decent price. Let me tell you, they've got... A Mayday Fanny Pack Kit for less than 30 bucks, A Guide 10 Plus Adventure Kit for solar power. A five-man tent for $89. Tomahawks, GPS, go bags, so much more. Take a look at it. Freeze-dried food, supplies, you wouldn't believe it. Now, they also sell guns online, and they also have military surplus items. Now, new items are being added daily. If you order more than $100, items are shipped free. Now, they also do take PayPal, so take a look at it. It's ultimatepreppers.net. That's ultimatepreppers, that's plural, dot net. Feeling like there are too many pressures and demands on you? Losing sleep, worrying about tests and schoolwork? Eating on the run because your schedule is just too busy? You may be under too much stress, and it may be affecting your mind. Get your mental edge back with Nootropic Mind Power from MindRegard.com. Nootropic Mind Power is not a drug, but a natural supplement. Its 12 powerful ingredients are natural and non-GMO, plus it's gluten-free, wheat-free, and formulated by Americans for Americans by an NSF-certified laboratory. Nootropic Mind Power is available at MindRegard.com. Spelled M-I-N-D-R-E-G-A-R-D dot com and comes with a 100% money back guarantee. Free your mind with new Tropic Mind Power Cognitive Supplement from MindRegard.com. MindRegard. Clearly see tomorrow and yesterday. Today. Are you storing food? Many preppers are storing food for months and years but only have enough fuel stored for days or weeks. Stretch your fuel storage by harnessing the power of the sun with a sun oven. Food can be baked, boiled, or steamed at temperatures of 360 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit with the power of the sun. Depending on where you are located, you can use the sun for 50 to 80% of your cooking, allowing you to preserve your fuel storage for rainy days. Sun-baked foods stay moister and have less shrinkage and don't burn. Sun-baked roasts are tastier and more succulent, and sun-baked bread has unparalleled taste and texture. Water can be heated in a sun oven for purification or personal hygiene. For the past 25 years, sun ovens have been proudly made in the U.S. They are durable, have a long life, and come with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. For a discount coupon, email podcast at sunoven.com. That's podcast at sunoven.com. This is KPRN-DB, broadcasting worldwide from Southeast Oklahoma, USA, to parts unknown. This is where Sun Tzu and MacGyver meet the Waltons. you can prep for yourself and for your family. I believe in you. Big boy or big girl underwear on because you know what? Your 
you're going to have to be an adult and you're going to have to step up the plate because you've got people depending on you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. James Smith, the Covert Prepper, with the Covert Prepper Show. How's everyone doing tonight? I apologize for not getting this posted. I've been up to my eyeballs in network security issues. All information provided tonight is for entertainment purposes and for, or for post-apocalyptic uses. Please don't use it to break the law. Oh, you're going to love this one. A little bit of uh, a couple of things. All right, so I'm a former U.S. Navy enlisted sailor and prison corrections officer for medium and minimum security inmates, and I was a covert disability insurance fraud investigator for several years. And I currently work for a company that provides support to the disabled. As the show says, this is where Sun Tzu and MacGyver meet the Waltons, and you're going to see some of that tonight. My Twitter name is at Covert Prepper. That's C O V E R T P R E P P E R. The blog is thecovertprepper.com, and you can reach me at James at thecovertprepper.com, and the YouTube channel is The Covert Prepper. You can visit um, prepperpodcast.com and listen to the live feed 24 7, or you can use your telephone and call area code 786 837 2278. Long distance rates may apply. Now, we do have um, a new advertiser. Actually, uh, two, uh, Ultimate Preppers and the, um, the Go Foods, uh, the Preparedness Guru. Okay, and, and you heard those ads earlier, so I'm done with that. So let's talk about ooh, network security. The Prepper Podcast site has been beaten up left and right since the article that I explained last week, where the government issued a, or gave contract, awarded a contract to a company that doesn't exist. I'm talking beaten mercilessly like a red-headed stepchild, red-headed stepchildren. I apologize for using that analogy. However, uh, just spent a two-hour phone conversation with a couple guys, uh, one who will be soon a, um, an advertiser, and um, I'll be maybe doing some writing for them uh, to bring some technical down to a level that everybody can understand. I, I, I give it to the chickens, and if they don't give me a, a blank stare, then I know I've done it good job. I did it in college all the time. Anyways, we think we got to figure it out. Besides the fact that cPanel error logs have been described as looking like spaghetti. Now, if you want to see spaghetti, look on the inside of the receiver of a radar. That's spaghetti. That's a bunch of wires all tossed together. And they're not color-coded, of course. But anyways, been fighting that tooth and nail. I think we got it resolved. So let's talk about other issues. Let's talk about where MacGyver and Sun Tzu are going to come in to help you. Now, later, we're going to be talking with John Mang from the Sonoran Desert Institute about being a gunsmith, which, let's be honest, is going to be in high demand shortly here. So let's talk about, oh, Skippy, the boy wonder. He may do an executive order banning all firearms. No. Now, there's two schools of thoughts about this. Well, three. One, it ain't going to happen. Two, they're going to have to pry my gun from my dead cold fingers. And the three is, it's time to bury them. The first one, yeah, I ain't making any bets. Second one, tell me how that works for you. And the third one, the third one is what we're going to talk about. Now, you're going to need a couple things. One, you're going to need some 3-inch PVC. You're going to need two end caps, 3-inch. Or you can do 4-inch. You can do 6-inch. I don't blinking care. Anyways, what you're going to do is you're going to find a piece of your property at the lowest point. Now, you're going to need not only this PVC pipe, but you also may want to use a steel box and a Ziploc bag. Mm, but the number one thing, the number one thing you've got to have, I don't care. I don't care if you use a burlap bag for what I'm about to tell you, but you've got to have this one item. You have got to have a nosy neighbor, not any kind of nosy neighbor, the kind that's got the Obama 08 and Obama 12 stickers on there. And the one that's got a little bumper sticker says meat is a nice way of saying murder. Heart attack is God's way of getting back for eating his tasty little animals. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. The kind that you just want to look at and think, I can compost you in the post-apocalyptic setting because I will. Okay, I won't give you a decent burial. I'm going to make you useful in some way. I'm going to compost you. 
you need this person. You need this person more than you need that PVC piping. But we're going to take this PVC pipe and we're going to take a drill. We're going to take a 3 8 quarter inch, half inch drill bit, I don't care which. And on the one half level of it, okay, so you've got it right in front of you and you block it so it doesn't move. Maybe tape tuck it, duct tape it down. And every few inches, you're going to drill a hole. Not just one hole, but several. It's going to, This is going to look like a Swiss cheese job. All right? And you're going to put end caps on it. And then... You, you need to find the lowest point on your property. You don't glue the caps on. Just stick them in there. Now you go to this lowest point of your property, and you dig a trench, roughly the same size as this pipe. But you have to do it a certain time of day. The time of day, the Miss Busybody, the little whiny little thing that you want to make into compost has to be making coffee and has to be seeing you kind of gauge when this is going on. You've got to figure it out. So, you take this PVC pipe and when you walk it out to the lowest point and you dig this trench out, you're going to pretend it's heavy because there's nothing in there. And you're going to put it, you're going to dig this trench. Never let them see the holes. Don't let them see the holes. Alright, so you put that trench in there, that, that pipe into the trench, remove one of the end caps. Rotate the pipe so the holes are on the top. Bury said pipe. Now you want to make it so that it looks like that pipe is there. And then um, you cover the dirt. You cover it with dirt. And if you see the busybody, you, guys, you didn't see me doing anything out there recently, did you? No, no, no. Why? What were you doing? Oh, I was just putting a drainage ditch in. Yeah, we, we get some flooding in there once in a while. But don't tell anybody. I don't want to get in trouble with the borough or the county or whoever because I didn't get a building permit for it. You won't tell them, will you? Oh, no. So when it comes time for gun confiscation, what do you think Miss Busybody is going to do? Mr. Future Compost. He buried his guns out there. It looked like he's got like a bunch of them because he was, he was really straining to, to, to lift the... the the, the tube up and it's right there look 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 right there and so they're going to unbury it and they're going to see a PVC pipe with a bunch of holes acting as a drainage ditch you were totally honest you did not commit a crime now that's one way you can hide your guns what's another way oh something easy you need the steel box it's just a cheap steel box Ziploc bag. Now, I'm not going to tell you what you're going to put in there just yet, but you have to do the same time of day. Make it a little heavier, you know, uh, maybe put a rock in there to start with, and then you drop it in there and you know, on the ground and it makes sound and they can hear. And then what you're going to do is you're going to bury this. And again, you want to make sure that they can see it, they know exactly where it's at, and it's going to be, okay, you don't want it flush with the dirt, okay? You kind of want a little mound. You want to keep this somewhat disturbed. Same reason being, they're going to come up over there, and they're going to dig this thing up because you've got your handguns in there. You know, this may or may not happen. You just want to be ready. You have to talk to your missus or your mister about this because this is very important. So they're going to open this box. And what are they going to find? They're going to find papers inside a plastic box or bag, a Ziploc bag. What kind of papers? Divorce paperwork. When they open it up in front of you, because they probably will, what do we have here? Paperwork. You look to your mister or missus and you say to them, honey, we were having problems. I just wanted to have the divorce paperwork ready. I'm sorry. She has to know about this. That way you guys can practice. You know, She can do the teary-eyed look and things like this. And Trying to make those papers undated. Just get generic ones. You don't spend more than 10 minutes on it. You can get sample ones. Make sure you've got the uh, pleading right, though. In the district court of the county of Umpty Squat, in the state of confusion... You know, that way it looks more legitimate. But this is called simple misdirection. Now, where are those weapons? I'm not going to tell you where to put them. 
I'm going to leave it to your better judgment because you know your home. Yes, you can put the firearms, long arms, long weapons right next to your wiring. Why wiring? Well, one, it's insulated. Two, it emits an electromagnetic discharge. An electromagnetic discharge means that it will mess with a metal detector because metal detectors go off of magnetism. Electricity running through wire creates an electromagnetic field. Hmm. See how simple that is? It's really simple. Now, what's another place you can hide a gun? Everywhere else. The Covert Prepper's Guide to Survive in the Apocalypse tells you on how to do it. But, another place you can put, let's say a, uh, a handgun. I collect teddy bears. I know, it, I don't sound manly, but I collect teddy bears. What do you think is in my teddy bear collection? Think about it. You could put teddy bears on a shelf somewhere and, you know, even a picture of your little girl or whatever, your little granddaughter. Oh, those are her bears from when she comes over. Yeah. They also happen to carry about 400,000 rounds of ammunition. But they're, they're just teddy bears, officer. Now, let's talk about something the government has been doing. They've been buying a lot of ammunition. And somewhere around here, I'm going to find the quote that Obama said. This administration is going to lead by example. All right, so let's follow their example, ladies and gentlemen. Buy lots of ammunition. Buy lots of hollow point ammunition. I'm just following what the government says, does, right? So let's, uh, let's think about doing that. That makes it so much easier. So that is my tip for today. You're going to bury your quote-unquote weapon. No, what you're going to bury is a PVC pipe as a drainage ditch. You're going to bury a metal box that contains divorce paperwork. How somebody perceives that to be, so when you're about to bury that, you're looking around, nobody there. You know that future compost is looking out the window. But you don't look at them. You just kind of look around and you know, kind of do it at dusk. You know, when they're sitting down, making dinner, doing dishes, whatever. That way, it, it looks more plausible. Here in Frostbite Falls, we don't have to bury our weapons. We can't right now because the ground's frozen. So we have to think of other things. If something bad does happen, you will know about it on PrepperPodcast.com. I suggest that you get the emails, sign up as a user, and that way you'll get the daily notifications um, this, let's see, the 22nd is when Diane Feinstein's bill is supposed to come into effect. I don't know what that lady has been smoking, but I think she really needs to find a new job. And I'm surprised that a lot of Californians just don't ditch her. They really should do a recall. In fact, anybody who supported NDAA should be recalled. That's just my humble opinion, because I have an opinion. All right, now I've got John Meng uh, on a recorded interview that I just did uh, yesterday. Now, John Mang is a um, an instructor at the Sonoran Desert Institute, and he does the gunsmithing. And let me tell you about gunsmithing. It's really needed right now. Part of the reason why it's needed is because it's a skill that not a lot of people have, and he explains in the interview. But what I'm trying to do here is get the contact information. So let me keep talking real quick. When it comes time for a post-apocalyptic setting, when you have nothing, and I do mean nothing, for repairs, you're going to need somebody who has the ability to be able to create something. You can take steel and you can make parts. Now, I've even seen an article where you can make a fully automatic weapon from um, ordinary off-the-shelf items. And let me give you some quick contact information for John Meng, M-E-N-G. Uh, the website is Sonoran Desert Institute, or SDI.edu. There's a Facebook. You look for SDI Schools, all one word. The phone number is area code 480-314-2102. And let's see if we have an email address. I'm going to say it is info at SDI.edu. I will um, step away now and let the interview take place, and then we'll just basically have a simple ending. I will talk to everybody next week. Now, I'm going to be having a secret gardener. Ooh, covert gardening. Where have I heard that before? All right, so here's John Mangan and our conversation that we had yesterday.
why don't you tell me about the Sonoran Desert Institute School of Firearms Technology? Well, I'm more adverse on the gunsmithing side. Okay. Uh, there's two different schools. Uh, the gunsmithing certificate is a it's a 40 semester credit certificate course, and it's uh, when you look at the different vocational schools that are out there. Uh, there's always plumbers and electricians. But this is a very economical course, and it's a, a skill that is in high demand. Uh, recently, I just looked at a, at a uh, population of uh, Austin, Texas. It's over 800,000 people, but a Google search only reveals six gunsmiths. Wow. And so when you look at one skilled person for 136,000 residents, that's a commodity that's high demand. Well, when you say it's economical, are you talking time economic, uh, dollar economic? Dollars. I mean, the, the entire program, total cost of the program is less than $2,500. Oh, okay. So you can study online. You study at your own pace. Um, and the SBI, the Snorri Desert Institute, has, has an even – they're setting up an intern program. So once you get your certificate, they'll help you find an internship, and you get hands-on experience. So it's like a um, career placement? I wouldn't necessarily call it career placement, but it they'll help you get an intern, and then and then it'd be I guess up to you to to find, actually find a paying job or oh. start your own start okay. your own business. And how long typically does something like this take? Oh, it can take anywhere from up to forty eight weeks, or it could be a lot shorter. Um, there are some students that are going through the online modules very very quickly. Um, they might be able to cut that down to half. It just depends on how much time you have to go over the material, do the testing, and proceed to the next. Okay. Um, a little question I don't know if you know the answer to, but is something like this financial aid available through the feds or through the VA, um, anything of that yes. nature? Yes. There are, there are programs for uh, U.S. military tuition assistance reimbursement, um, and it is a very popular course amongst the vets. I mean, they obviously have a comfort level already with uh, several different models of firearms, so it's a it's a nice little jumping off point for them. I was in the Navy, and our gun our gunners mates say they just love their small arms as well as their their large weapons, but they're mm -hmm. rather comfortable in the armory. Um, so, what what prompted you to become a gunsmith? I my father was. Uh, a gunsmith, more of a hobbyist at that point. And um, early in my career, I was in law enforcement. Uh, so there was always, I was always been around guns, whether it be on the firearm um, hunting side or law enforcement. And so it was just a, an easy progression for me. It's, uh, it's also good to know if you're using a tool, know how to fix it, know how it works. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so what are the benefits of knowing gunsmithing? I mean, you just you gave a um, you know it's rarer to find a gunsmith than a doctor. So, mm -hmm. besides that, what are some other benefits? Well, in today's economy, it's always beneficial to have more skills at your disposal. If you lose your job, you have something to fall back on. Um, I've always been a big advocate of having as many skills as you can. It gives you more options. Um, so having gunsmithing as a career option or even as a, as a hobby that brings in a little money here and there, um, it, it's hard to beat that. I mean, if you love hunting, if you love weapons in general, uh, just as a shooter, as a competitive shooter, um, doing what you love to do and getting money at it is a perfect scenario. I think all of us would like to do that, no matter what that trade or skill happens to be, do what you love and say it's not work. Yeah, if you do what you love, it's you. You don't work a day in your life. Um, That's true. Now, technically speaking, what exactly is gunsmithing? For those that have never heard of the phrase or, or or just don't know the definition. Wow, it is a very broad, broad topic. Um, gunsmithing school will teach you everything from the history of firearms, all the way to basic repairs, um, assembly, um, how to actually do woodwork or the rebluing of the metal. Um, Hand loading. Uh, we all know ammunition is getting more and more expensive. 
and there's no better way to cut some costs than to start reloading your own. Um, you can we will teach you how to fabricate your own wood stocks, um, how to make it on uh, iron sights and scopes and sling swivels. It's a very wide, diverse uh, field of study. And then at the end of it, you can decide whether you want to specialize in antique weapons or specialize in the AR style. I mean, they're, it, the, you're really left open to whatever you want to do once you have that basic skill set. Okay, so after I go through the course and I've got my certification and internship, is it difficult or easy, just about average, to find a full-time job? Well, you, you, there's, there's finding a job with a, uh, a gunsmith. Uh, you can certainly do that. There are not that many of them out there, as we've already discussed. Uh, however, they have to take the interns, but the bulk of our graduates go into business for themselves. So they can they start as a hobbyist. Uh, they start doing work for friends or uh, colleagues somewhere else. Uh, they'll put up a little sign and just start doing work. So this becomes an extra, not an extra job, but it becomes it becomes their livelihood. Okay. See, um, I mean, I think about starting doing my own uh, reloads. Um, mm -hmm. My dad does them still, and uh, it's just, I think, a skill that I really need to pick up, and the price of ammo is going to be skyrocketing, and and to be quite honest with you, you know, it's brass is going to become really rare to find. So I figure I might want to collect it now instead of later. Now, some of the uh, modules you had said that are in there is like the bluing and the the stock making. Uh, how about fabricating the parts? You know, for example, on um, you know the little slide releases or the little pieces of metal. Is that part of gunsmithing? It is. Um... I can't say that there's full modules based that, that, that create that uh, that skill set for you. It is touched on throughout, and by the time you get through the course, you'll have a basic understanding of all the different parts. Um, so, and how to use some of the tools that you would need, uh, whether it be a, a lathe or uh, drill presses and everything else to make these uh, to make these pieces. Um, so. Again, this gives you the basic course. This gives you the basic. Uh, there are more advanced courses you can go. You know, you keep going, keep learning. Such uh, as the firearms technology. Uh, uh, the course that you mentioned earlier. That's more of an advanced course. Which one? Uh, the firearms technology. Oh, okay. So, what exactly? What kind of modules are in that technology course? Um, again, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not as well okay. versed on that one. All right, that's fine. Um, but we can find other we can find out by visiting the website, and that oh, yes. website is what fdi.edu. Okay, um, what kind of person makes the best kind of gunsmith? I think you would definitely want to have someone that is good with their hands. Uh, the more detailed oriented, the better. I think in in a lot of different ways, but just a basic understanding of the firearm and how it works is is the essential ingredient and just being good with your hands a little bit it's 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 not brain surgery thankfully now um how about women are there a lot of women gunsmiths you know i don't know what the demographics are but my gut tells me that there's going to be more men involved in this industry than, than women okay does are you aware if, if SDI is actively encouraging women to apply for the course, or is there um, something that, that might entice women to become gunsmiths? I do not know of a specific campaign directed, targeted directly at women. Um, the campaigns that the SDI has uh, put out has been broad stroke, just anyone that is interested. Okay. Uh, because it is a online course. Uh, there's certain, certainly no reason uh, women should feel uh, in any way intimidated not to take it. Well, the reason I ask is because my wife had um, a long history doing um, very small mm -hmm. technical work, um, you know, assembling cell phones and things like this, making transformers. And so she's very good with her hands when it comes mm -hmm. to the fine movements. And I was thinking perhaps 
you know, uh, women might actually kind of really benefit from a course like this. We have a lot of women listeners, and so I'd, I'd like to encourage them to um, pick up a skill like too. this. I would too. So, all right. Um, let's see. How many? Uh, let's see. Now you said there's only six in in, um, in San Antonio. Roughly, do you know how many are in the nation that are? I do not. Gunsmiths? I have tried to pull some numbers on that, but I don't know that there's anything that's uh, comprehensive enough to give us that. Um, give us that data there you could get data on the number of federal firearm licenses that are out there um, and FBI will help a gunsmith when they graduate uh, get that FFL because certain work will require that that license but I don't but I don't know that, oh, okay uh, every gunsmith I mean, you could take the course and not have to have a federal firearm license. But if there's certain work you're going to do for a paying client, yes, you would have to have it. Oh, okay. Um, so we can find you at, um, at sdi.edu, and you've provided other contact information, which I'll put on the website. Um, if you had a choice between doing gunsmithing or – Anything else? Would you um, would you call this like your life's vocation? <laughs> Anything else is pretty broad category. Yeah, well, you know, I'm thinking gardening. You know, I, I like gardening, but oh, you know, I'm I'm a master uh, of a lot of trades. But you no, know, gunsmithing is from an economic sense, it makes great sense to study it and develop that skill simply because your competition out in the marketplace is very small. Uh, it's not like you're learning how to be a plumber and then you have to go into the marketplace and compete with a thousand different plumbers looking for looking for business. If you become a gunsmith, people will come to you. You are a destination service. Plus, if you enjoy it, no. like like we said, yeah. uh, if you enjoy the work, it's not work. Now, how? I mean, what are we looking at for like a like a rate that you would charge somebody? Let's say you had to redo a stock on a on a shotgun. What are we looking at for a dollar amount? Oh, just that, would, that, that varies so greatly from the different uh, every, every different community, every different state. It's whatever the market will bear at that point. Okay. Well, as I say, for example, um, somebody's got a Remington shotgun and needs replaced, and they need their you know they've got a cracked stock, and you know um, I take it you would show me on how to you know, redo the stock according to. The Remington manuf uh, specifications is that about right? Or it could be, or it could be custom specifications, whatever the whatever the client wants. Okay. Now I did read something um, recently that the I think it's Feinstein's bill wanted to get rid of the thumb stocks on rifles and you know other firearms. Um, what do you think about that? I think what is happening right now uh, on a national level regarding guns is a travesty of justice. It is anti-liberty. It is anti-constitution. And it is scary, the amount of frenzy that is going on right now. You, you said the right word, because it's being a feeding yeah. frenzy. I mean, holy Moses. Not just not just at the, at the political level, but it's hard to find ammunition. I went to Walmart, and um, there's the hunting... Um, section, and then there's everything else, and the, everything else is, is emptying out. And this is hunting season right now. So it's, it's well, rather frightening. We, we basically have two frenzies going on. We have a media and government frenzy over what, they're, what they term as gun violence, and we have a consumer frenzy buying up every gun and box of ammunition they can because they're afraid that suddenly we're going to get executive orders banning these products. Um, and I would like to make one statement regarding the term gun violence. Uh, personally, and I'm not speaking for SDI on this, but um, they may back me up 100%, but personally, I reject the term gun violence. We do not hear about hammer violence or knife violence or baseball bat violence. And recently we had the we had the murder in Illinois lottery winner. You know, do we now have a, a rise in Chicago for cyanide violence? I mean, the term gun violence is a progressive catchphrase to, to spur the anti-liberty agenda. And violence is violence, period. 
and our focus really should be on the acts, not on the tools. You're absolutely right, because I'm waiting for them to ban box <laughs> cutters, and soon they'll be banning cliffs because people can be That's pushed right. off a cliff. They'll ban all cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> and sharp, pointy things. And <laughs> You're absolutely right. And, and when you allow somebody to set the definitions like gun violence, um, yeah, everybody's got to be called on that. You know, it's not gun violence; it's people okay. on people violence. And on the very same day that 20 children were killed, 22 children were killed in China mm -hmm. with a knife. And it's not the gun that killed the person; it's not the knife that killed the person; it's the crazy person, the angry person that killed. And that's part of what we need is an education throughout not only the the firearm industry but is among the general public, guns are a tool. They can be used for recreation. They can be used for self-defense. They can be used for hunting, put food on the table. They are a tool, and that's all they are. Um, in our society today, some, in some areas, gun owners are being treated like second-class citizens, that there's something to be fearful of, something to be worried about, that every gun owner is a crazed madman out there. And it is simply not the case, and the only way we can truly defeat that is through education. I'm thinking of uh, Mr. Obama's uh, – he's got the secret uh, protocols for declaring on who can be killed by drones in Pakistan and everywhere else. And I want to make this little graphic of a Predator drone. It says, Obama's signature has killed more people than my mm -hmm. firearm. And – it, it's totally just amazing to me that no one cares that he's got this power. Well, there's that, and, and I think we Ted don't Nugent, know what the I criteria sure is. I attribute Ted Nugent. I mean, he, he said it best here recently when he said, if guns kill people, mine are defective. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so are mine. But they have put some holes in some pieces of wood, <laughs> and thankfully they, they, they're capable of doing that. All right, so um, what kind of contact information are you comfortable sharing with my listeners? Well, I think if uh, they'd like to learn more about uh, gunsmithing, uh, go to fdi.edu. Uh, you can email info at fdi.edu. And you said you, you uh, gave you a phone number earlier that you're going to post on the website, 480-314-2102. Okay, and you guys have a Facebook page already. I see that, and I probably should like that <laughs> just so I get that taken care of. But um, um, you've got a product, you've got a service, you've got a concept, and people need to know about these. Well, if there's anything that I can ever do for you um, or, or FDI can do for you, please let me know. Are you sick and tired of having your First Amendment harassed or censored on Facebook? Use no more as we now have a new alternative to Facebook. It's called Awareness Act. Awareness Act is a social network designed for patriots, to be used by patriots, and is ran by patriots. Stand up and help in the fight to protect your constitutional rights. Patriots can create pages, blogs, videos, documents, articles, and so much more. We even have a unique news feed system that allows you to share, read, or connect with any patriot on Awareness Act. We are a dedicated tool for patriots to use against the tyranny our Constitution is facing. So if you're tired of having your rights infringed upon, come check us out at www.awarenessact.com. Again, that is www.awarenessact.com, the social network for patriots, not potatoes. Whether you take me for the fool, I know that I can be. Whether you see me eye to eye. This is KPRN DB, broadcasting worldwide from Southeast Oklahoma, USA to parts unknown.